are live. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on episode three of the Rebellion of Umbari. We are currently in the Cosmos Library. Um, last we left off, you were getting a tour from Quill's aunt in the uh, Gallery of Remembrance. Right. Um, it is a section of the library that has paintings and statues and um, it's basically like a collection of people who have donated to the library or um, the stuff that they have donated. And it's just kind of like a, a gallery to Big honor music. them and to just, yeah, just to like display all the nice stuff. And um, your aunt is responsible for maintaining the gallery, uh, keeping it clean, making sure that people don't touch anything, you know, stuff like that. And I will take you guys there. First thing I'm going to do. To touch everything. <laughs> Ciao. Ooh. Okay. And I will mm, Baby, I love you. <laughs> take me down. I want to love you every night and day. Uh, every see. night and day. Every morning there's a halo in. <laughs> Sugar <laughs> Ray. <laughs> I love you guys. Have I ever told you that? <laughs> My heart would be empty without each and every one of you. <laughs> All right. Um, so, <laughs> so anyway... <laughs> Uh, let's see. Your aunt Doreen was giving you a tour of the Gallery of Remembrance, and she was just about to start her tour before we ended the session. Okay. Um, I believe that you had asked about a statue that you saw of Elastray. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. That I did. Um, that you did. Basically depicted... The moment she was um, <laughs> exiled. That yeah. I did. Um, you absolutely did. correct. Um, yes. So, um, <laughs> it was a moment of celebration. So, her. she's going to begin her tour, and <laughs> she starts <sighs> taking you around. Okay, yeah. Um, Let's go. Yeah. So she's going to take you to the section where she so shows several statues of um, different deities that have contributed to the library. One of them was Elastre. Another one, you see a large head of um, a dragon that's made of pure platinum. And um, this one, this on the stream. Yeah. Okay. She uh, describes it as a recreation of um that's Yeah, it's Bahamut. There we go. Sorry. I had to pull up my list of gods. 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 <laughs> There's so many of them. So many, many gods. So many gods. So many gods. So many. So many yeah, gods. There's so many. You want to spell? Play a spell with me. <laughs> Play with me. Play with me. All so, right. what is so, this hall um, called again? Uh, it is called the Hall of Remembrance. The, the Hall of Remembrance. Okay. Right. Or, I'll try uh, to remember that. The Gallery of Remembrance. I'm sorry. The Gallery of Remembrance. My gallery God, Lewis. Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
I already wrote it down in pen, Lewis. Damn it! <laughs> I can't take it back. Fuck. Okay. It's the Let's Hall start. of Remembrance now. <laughs> so, uh, she points to a uh, statue, and it is a depiction of Bahamut. The statue is made of pure platinum uh, to represent the uh, platinum dragon. Um, he is a chaotic good god. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He is a lawful good god of justice and nobility. Um, and she starts uh, listing off, like, several of the donations that Bahamut has made. Um, let's see. Who else is donated? Uh, there's another depiction of a golden statue over here. <clears throat> and uh, um, she one basically... One question about Bahamut. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Teacher? Tell me yes. everything about Bahamut. Uh, <laughs> I have one question. I have one a... question. Tell me everything about okay. it. <laughs> the plat he uh, Bahamut was a platinum dragon? Yes. Um so the platinum dragons are a part of the metallic class and not the chromatic class. If, is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um do the two classes um are they naturally antagonistic towards each other? Yes. They are? Absolutely. Okay. They hate each other's guts. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Uh, I get you. this guy. I get him. <laughs> He's got a turf war with the, metal- with the chromatic dragons. I Sorry, him. what is her name again? Uh, Her name is... Good word. <laughs> uh, her name is Doreen. Doreen? Yeah. Just first name? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, well, Doreen Swift Plume. Swift Plume. Okay. Yeah. Not on first and last name basis with her yet. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know her last name. I don't hey, know her like that. Hey, Lewis. I don't know if it's yes. a Ms. or Mrs. situation. You're doing great, Lewis. Thank you. Thank you so much. I tried. Yeah, you do great. All right. Yeah. <laughs> she shows like some other depictions of gods. Do you want me to go through all of them, or you want me to just kind of give you a brief description? You can do briefs. Yeah, briefs. Okay. Brief. You, you can brief. Yeah, I like wearing briefs. I like briefies. All right, so she basically mentions um, Bahamut, Lothander, uh, the Tempest. Um, she mentions uh, Paylor. Oh, not Paylor. Um, Lolf. Um, Lol. <laughs> Lolf. Lol. Wolf. Lolf. Wolf. 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 Spiders. Spiders. Spider queen. <laughs> Spiders. Boop, 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 boop. But yeah, she lists off a bunch of gods and um, shows you some of the stuff that they've donated. Uh, she mentions like their like realms, gives you like a brief description about like what they rule over, and um, she starts showing you some of the donations that they've uh, given. One of them is a uh, horn that summons tornadoes. Um, huh? yeah. Wait, hold on. <laughs> I would like to <laughs> press on that. Hold on. The horn just, of summon you can't tornadoes. just you can't just try to fucking move did past just, that, Lewis. Yeah, did you just try to skip? There's past a there's a horn the that turns a turtle. There's a. <laughs> <laughs> you you, oh, you have some detail on that one? <laughs> yeah. Doreen. 
Uh, yes, hey, this hey is, Doreen. Uh, yes. <laughs> what, what is it? You asked a lot of questions. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> that is a horn that summons tornadoes. It was donated by the Tempest. Um, <laughs> oh. Uh, would would I there? know about this, or am I also like actually surprised? No, you, you're super familiar with this. Like you've gone on this tour so many times. Like, okay, it, yeah, none of this stuff is a big deal to you. Okay. <laughs> so oh. yeah, just tornado. What? <laughs> but just yeah. keep it here. Like what? It like is yeah. Well, seems yeah. dangerous. Well, most things in uh you know this area are extremely dangerous or can be. Um, but they were uh, donations. Uh, some things we keep in the um, the vault where we hold artifacts. But every once in a while, we will swap out um, the artifacts that are kept in there and put them on display. And you know, have you ever used description. it? Me? Oh no, no, no! <laughs> I've never used it. Uh, the last time it was used, it destroyed basically an entire continent can we see the collections of all through the archives it was a nice continent can you see what the archives the collections vault? it was a really nice continent oh, that's <laughs> it was a badass continent i i yeah. chilled there a lot it really it really sucked <laughs> i like to hang out there yeah. dude i, I chilled there all up. the time fucking got fucked up with my it really all the time. really did not deserve it no it was, it was very tropical very beautiful <laughs> a real waste yeah it was the God, ultimate it was so vacation. Chill, oh, so chill. But um, yes, we keep all of our artifacts in the repository. Um, you're familiar with this. This is where your uncle Wyatt uh, usually like keeps watch of stuff. He's in charge of all the artifacts, and um, if they were donated by somebody specifically, they'll be rotated out in this gallery, and. Um, Basically, whenever Doreen feels like it, she swaps stuff out and will put it up on display and come up with a uh, a plaque and put it on there so people can read like who donated it, where it's from, what it does, uh, some noteworthy times it was used, or something interesting about its creation. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty much what Doreen does. Um, you have a favorite piece, Doreen? Oh, I do. Absolutely. Um, but that's that's kept in my husband's vault. Ooh, Doreen. Ooh. Doreen. Oh, yes. Keeping it with the Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway. Why don't you have it out here? It's your favorite. Oh, it's, it's, it's far too dangerous. Oh, Doreen. Okay. Yes, we, I, are I we going to be able to see it? it on no, absolutely not. <laughs> why, why, not <laughs> well, why not, though? As I said, it's, it's dangerous. It's, it's it's more dangerous than what I have displayed here, which is quite dangerous. Something more oh. dangerous than something that can summon tornadoes. Yes. Oh. Anyway... I have to keep you in check. Hold on. <laughs> we <laughs> Maestro is the one allowed to kind of walk around. So let's avoid that. <laughs> because if something messes up, it's my fault, and I really don't feel like getting yelled at um, <laughs> by Grandmother Edith. So. Oh no! You, you definitely don't want to get her mad. No, not again. Not again. <laughs> no, not again. Um. This here is an eyeball that was taken out of a long dead beast, and when you stare into it, you go insane. Which is why we keep it in this opaque enchanted glass, uh, so you can view it without it affecting you. Um, but yeah, that's why we say don't touch. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, let's okay. continue. <laughs> All right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna go to Maestro and be like, "This this room scares me. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like this room. It seems like a really dangerous room. It's yeah. extremely dangerous." <laughs> um, 
This lady is very <laughs> menacing. <laughs> she scares me a lot. <laughs> hey, hey, she keeps funny. she keeps hey. a hey, hey Doreen. <laughs> yes? You scare me. <laughs> <laughs> I have that effect on people. Anyway, this right here is the bear skin of uh, a dire bear that was um, from the Feywild. Basically, when you wear its skin, it allows you to change your shape into anything. Oh wow! Yes, I've heard of can... I've heard of that before, right? I've heard of that type of thing. Probably. Okay. Who was Most that donating? Okay. This is the least scary thing in this room so far. <laughs> um, that was donated by. Let me see who donated. It. And it's a bear skin of shape shifting. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. Oh, this was donated by the Sealy Court of the Feywild, which you would know um, basically the Feywild can be broken up into two major groups, the Sealy and the Unsealy Court. Uh, how do you spell Sealy? Um, S E E L I E. Okay. Just the Sealy Court and the non Sealy Court? Mm hmm. Okay. This, uh, uh, this one in particular. Court. Yes. The Un Sealy Court. The un this was donated by the Un Sealy Court? No, by the Sealy Court. The Sealy Court. Okay. Gotcha. Um. Else. Over here. Um, oh, excuse me. Um, over here, we have a axe that was donated by, um, over here, uh, it was donated by a wonderful, wonderful man named Batuar. Uh, he resides in the Nine Hells. This axe allows you to absorb the souls of your enemies that are slain by it, and it basically holds the spirit of a uh, a very ancient demon. Um, oh, I'm sorry, not demon, devil. Those are different. Uh, of a long lost. Uh, uh, devil that resides in this axe, and if enough souls are put into the axe, that devil is freed. Luckily, it wasn't, and it's still in there. Oh, wow. What's the devil like? Does the devil have a name? Is it like a famous one? Uh, he hasn't told anyone what his name is. Oh, wow. You've tried, you've asked him though? Yes, he, he can be a little bit rude, but, um, he's quite chatty. Just, uh, doesn't like answering personal questions. And who is it donated by? Uh, Bator. Bator. And is that a god? It is. Uh, the god of what? Uh, the Nine Hells. Oh my god. <laughs> 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 it's a little bit hot, but a nice vacation spot. Um, how do you spell Doubt Bator? It. <laughs> how do you spell Bator? Uh, you spell it. T B A T U R B A A T O R. Oh, okay. cool. Um, next, do you know why he donated it? You know, I didn't ask. Okay. Fair enough, fair enough. Go ahead. 
Carry on. I I usually don't um, get explanations for donations. They just say that they would like to make one, and I accept it, usually. Well, usually (laughs) Edith is the one that accepts it, and she'll run it by me. The judgment. Yes. Because, of course, if it's... uh, (laughs) It's too dangerous to keep in the library, or the library wouldn't be able to contain it. Wouldn't accept it. Right. Okay. But anyway, let's continue. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> um. So eventually, she. Finishes going around the room, and she takes you over to the other part. Grab her. Quick. Mm. <gasps> wow. There she is. It's a little <laughs> pond with fishes. Yeah. Fishy, fishy, <clears throat> fishy, boys. Don't touch the fish. <laughs> so she will lead you to the middle and um she will say now usually at this part of the tour i like to let the people who visit go and explore since stuff in here is less fragile it's all up on a wall here we keep all of our paintings and we have our fountain please don't feed the fish um <laughs> <laughs> But I will be here if you have any questions. Each of the paintings has a plaque that will describe the depiction of the painting, what it is called. Okay. And if you have any questions, I'm right here. Um, But please feel free. Take your time. I'll be over here. Okay. And uh, she flies over to the top of the fountain where there is a little stool. And she pulls out a, a small little pocket book and she begins to read her book. And this is just kind of like a place where she doesn't like to rush people and she just kind of lets them relax because there's like a relaxing fountain. Um, off in the distance, you do hear like a slight echoing faint violin and it's very soothing and it has just a very relaxing atmosphere. Gotcha. And this is a, a place where people can like take their time and peruse and she doesn't like to rush people so feel free to explore um i don't know if it shows up well on your screens but there are paintings on all of the walls and in the center and there are benches for you to sit down on as well okay um i guess i'd start um with the paintings in the rooms um some of the paintings you see are a unicorn with a woman riding on it you also see a large kraken that's holding up a ship and like has broken it in half and is in the process of pulling it under the ocean wow um you also see a knight that has like a very large sword um you see a door that is um decorated with like lots of gold and it looks extremely old um Hmm. you see a um, labels attached to any of these paintings yeah, they all have labels. Okay. I'm just kind of giving you like a brief description of like what's in the room so you can okay. uh, um, ask about them if you're interested. Okay, go for it. Um, there's also a castle that is floating um, in the sky. It looks like there's like some land formation under it, but it looks like it was ripped up from the ground and it's just kind of like floating in nice. the sky. Um, Love that. There's another one of uh what looks to be um i can never pronounce their names they're the angels are they um are you talking about um i i i've always pronounced them yeah 
Okay. Because, <laughs> like, I've heard people pronounce them differently. Asimir and Asimir are, like, the two common ones I always hear. I've always said Asimir. I could be wrong. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to go with Asimir, then. Or Asimar. Uh, sorry. Asimar. Um, it seems to be, like, depictions of uh, Asimar that are, like, flying in the sky. And uh, there's a large temple that's made up of um, gold. And uh, almost... It's it Asimar. Like Asimar? <laughs> Asimar. Asimar, thank you. Because, yeah. like, I've heard ASMR, which I know is wrong. <laughs> ASMR. <laughs> no, it's pronounced Asimar. I double-checked they all. Now. They all speak in... <laughs> they all speak like this. I, I double-checked, like, D&D D &D Beyond. They had a presentation. Okay. ASMR. everybody. <laughs> That's what their language sounds like, by the way. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> ASMRs. That was a, a biography. So awesomers. Awesome. 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 Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let's see. There is also a um. It looks like a a green glowing river with a, a boat on it, and there's someone that's like. Uh, burying the boat. Um, what else is there? There is a white lion that has two heads and pink eyes, and um, it's it, it basically an albino two-headed lion, and each one of them has like a a single horn coming out of their forehead. Um, those seem to be what you see right off the bat. Did you have any questions about a specific painting or? Um, I like the, I like the, I want to talk about the old, the door, the old door. What that is. The old door. Um, yeah. you see. Uh, you see a placard that says the door to everywhere. Um, it basically says that this was one of the first donations um, that was a painting to the library. Um, it depicts uh, a door that they aren't sure of the origin. Um, and they don't know who the artist is. This is one of the... Um, ones that they have the least information on in the library. Oh, wow. Um, okay, well, uh, considering that, I want to ask about the awesomer um, painting. Um, that one appears to be them, like, in front of a temple, and they're kind of having a party. They're, like, holding cups of wine, and there's, like, a feast out of there. And it's saying that this was a... This was a celebration in the celestial plane. And they were... I just want to make sure I get my... Is there a title a title of the painting? Yes. Okay.
Um, Miss Doreen, it, given if there is ever like a celestial crisis, would you ever loan any of these items out? Oh, absolutely not. Once it becomes a donation to the library, it stays here. Interesting. Yes, we don't get involved in anything outside. Not even if it were going to affect your own plane? Well, our plane isn't affected by other planes. It was specifically created to be completely separate. Oh. So even if multiple planes were destroyed, it wouldn't affect us in any way. Wow. We are completely neutral in every aspect of that. Um, and this library, the as a whole, um, I've heard it called the Library of Constellation. Um, are there any yes. other um, libraries like that? Mm, in, in what way? Um, like, there's a Library of Constellation. Would there be any other detached, like, separate libraries? Um, pl planar um, libraries? Not, not like this one. Not like um, that. there, there are libraries all over the place, but not one that collects knowledge the way that we do okay. and not one that's separated like we are. Okay. We kind of collect, um, uh, where you both peered in my chambers, everything that comes here comes to me. Um, basically from any, like, realm, uh, correct? I'm sorry, what was that? So, like, where, um, my friend Chico, uh, I'm so, it, it, I can't remember, is it Chico or Chico? It's Chico, right? Chico. 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 Not Big Storky. What well, is Big Storky, but also Chico. Um, <laughs> Chico. Um, Chico. yeah, so everything that appears, it can appear from any realm or universe. Universe. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we kind of act like the central uh, uh, um, quote would speak up. Uh, so yes, we act like a central um, kind of outside of the normal realm of physics and just realities um, to maintain kind of knowledge and records of everything. Yes. So. Gotcha. And when things appear um, in your quarters, um, how is it? How is it so that you've both separated yourself completely from other planners' actions? Yet you seamlessly receive um, like these artifacts and, and this knowledge from um, from other planes. And Andrean, forgive me if I'm misremembering, but it was through our ancestors, correct? They would they acted almost as what most people consider thieves, but we weren't using anything for our own personal gain. We wanted to preserve this knowledge. Um, and essentially were our family lineage and us as a whole. Um, since then we're kind of appointed to this library. Huh. Appointed by who? I want to look to Aunt Marine. As Quill is drawing a point. <laughs> <laughs> Doreen just kind of like looks over her book. Uh, we actually don't know that information isn't provided in the library. Wow. So, because you it, little... it'd be your ancestors, so it'd be thousands of years, right? Thousands and thousands of years. I think so, yes. as far as, unless it was when I was really, really young, I was born and raised here, so. Yes, it, it um, it, I'd say it goes back thousands of years. Okay. But, but you there don't know is the age of the library. Um, Would that it be might be written thing? down somewhere. Okay. But um, there are some Wait, things even the library to... doesn't know. Oh. Usually, it has to do with um, protection of the library, though. Right, so the the entity that created the library, 
the the knowledge that that entity has wouldn't necessarily imbue it into the library so there's like knowledge that is not in the library yes but only if it's for the protection of the library itself hmm. interesting and you don't have any ideas as to who that person might be that constructed the library or created it would have to have been a being lineage? that was extremely powerful yeah powerful than anything that's ever visited the library before and whoever it was has not visited the library since huh. interesting that might be fascinating nice. really there are people who spend their entire lives trying to find that answer out but nobody has at least yeah. yet um there are there are people that spend their entire lives <clears throat> um wondering about the existence of gods and here there's a library f with full of testaments to all of their artifacts and deeds yes it's very ironic i've never been much too spiritual but this is this is turning a new leaf for me i'm starting to believe that the gods really do have pull in the planar, you know, um, like in, you know, across planes and that, um, they're not just things that, that, you know, people don't have to, um, you know, abide by, they have to face the consequences of. Well, it is an interesting point. There are many people that go their entire lives without considering themselves with, you know, gods or demigods or anything of that sort. And in a way, they had no effect over their lives. And then there are some that are touched by those beings and has everything to do with their lives. It's sort of what you make it. Hmm. Um, what I can tell you is that normally the beings that exist over here aren't able to physically go to the world of mortals, um, for the protection of the universe itself. Um, they used to be able to, but no longer, hmm. um, and since then, they tend to either make avatars to go visit, or they'll select champions, or they'll try to spread their influence in the mortal realm, and that's how they have their power. Um, but it is up to the individual mortal themselves whether or not they involve themselves with gods or with no gods or a singular one. There are many mortals that worship multiple gods or dedicate themselves just to one. And they, they can be good or evil or neutral. It, it, there is a god that exists for many, many things. Um, do you think the decision um, that was made to keep gods from existing on the material plane was made by the same person that created this library? It's possible. I mean, anything is possible. Yeah. Garnett. Um, but yes. Well, are you guys you were, worried you in the about... Of, yeah, I'm sorry. Are you guys worried about having all these dangerous artifacts and, like, if someone does come in and just, like, fuck it, I'm just gonna use them all? Um... Well, the library is able to protect itself. Um, but nothing like that has ever happened before. Normally, people can't get to us in the first place. The people that can are usually deities, and they understand that if they tried to do something like that, well, they wouldn't have been able to enter the full library in the first place. But no one that's gotten past Edith has ever tried to do something like that. Right. 
um, about that, Andre. I was talking to Hunter. We were talking to Hunter, and he mentioned that there was a drow appeared here years ago. Oh, yes. Now that you mention it, there there was a visitor like that. Um, From to my knowledge, they were not a god either. When they no, arrived. they what were. Was this drow's name. Drow was. <laughs> All my papers. <laughs> Just shifting of papers. <laughs> uh, their name was uh, Bethon. They were a drow who was obsessed with coming, was uh, obsessed with becoming a god. Um, he sort of became a, a demigod in the process, in a way. Um, kind of stuck, not being able to advance his power further without his body becoming destroyed in the process. And so he came to the library to try to find a way to break through that threshold and become a full god. Whatever happened to him? Oh, he went to the restricted section and never came back. But that is a place that visitors are not able to go. Oh, there's a... Oh, so even when you said there's full access, there's still a place that um, I, w I, somebody like me wouldn't be able to um, wander into? Yes, that's usually the nest in the restricted section. The nest? That's where we all live. Oh, all of you live in one, like, big nest? Well, it's... it's not we call it the nest, um, but we all have our, our own areas and rooms, and there's common rooms. and okay. have an but, arcade? <laughs> yes, it's quite fun, actually. I love... Uh, uh, ski yeah. ball. Is there cotton candy? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Copious amounts of it, in fact. Ooh. We love that shit. Yes. We love that for you. <laughs> Thank you. It's not good for my waistline, but it's delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> Got the machine running twenty four seven. Um, it's enchanted. So Bathon oh. came to the restricted restricted section for some cotton candy. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> But that yeah, we happened. figured it out, guys. We figured out what happened with the drow. He wanted yeah. some cotton candy. <laughs> that happened when I was just a child, though. A oh, wow. Just a child. So it's been... It's been a while. It's very oh, rude wow. to ask someone their age, but... I know, It's been a very, very long time. You brought it up, so... <laughs> <laughs> So how uh how how long has that been? I don't know, you know, like twenty years? More than that. Much more. Oh. How much more? Uh, well <laughs> anyway. <laughs> if you have any questions about the paintings. Thirty years? Um, <laughs> more like a few 40? hundred. <laughs> Oh. And we'll leave it at that. Oh, it's way off. <laughs> you look great for your for your age, then. Thank you. Sorry. You could um, have left it as I look great, but. <laughs> oh, for your age, you look you look great. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just kind of like put one of like my talent face. Like, <laughs> I was asking about the name of the Asimer Celestial Feast painting. Oh. That is, um, if you would be so inclined, <laughs> that is the celebration of the sun, the celebration, like a steep mountain. If you would be so inclined, yes, <laughs> <laughs> it was a party that was hosted by Paylor and it was to commemorate, 
commemorate <laughs> the birth <laughs> of a new yeah, Pegasus. Commemor- <laughs> commemorate. <laughs> commemorate. <laughs> the birth of a new Pegasus. Old Sunface himself, huh? Yes. And... Very cool. Yeah. Um. Um. Uh, grandmother also wanted us to find out how the hell these two, um, got here because they didn't get here by convention. Would have you any know? lead? Ha- do you know anything about that? <laughs> um. Well, how did they get here? I don't know. They. I uh, was eating my lunch. And as one red, does, as one does, <laughs> and then a red, like a, a red, this track so far, sandwich. this tracks <laughs> like something like red appeared on, on our roof uh, in, in the roof of my chambers and they fell through. They never they went to the Hall of Judgment like way late. Hmm. That is that is very peculiar. Um, well. If anyone were to help you, that sounds like Wyatt might be able to help you. Okay. Wyatt, um, the keeper of the collections? Yes. We're not touching the necklace or the ring. The necklace? No. Or the ring? The ring. Sorry, the tornado, because that's where that's where it's at, right? The, oh, the horn. The horn. <laughs> the horn. Sorry, sorry, the horn. The horn. <laughs> the tornado horn. We are not touching that. We'll go talk to Wyatt, but I don't want to <laughs> I don't trust you two enough just yet. <laughs> or the soul absorption X. X. Um, I, I do remember um, Wyatt mentioning that he saw one of the stars turn red when um, Bathon came. And it sounds similar, but... One of the stars turned red? What yes. Star? I'm not sure the name of it. Um, there's there's a lot of them. Usually each star connects to a different plane of existence. So when Baton and, arrived at the library, it turned red? Yes. And then when he left, it turned back or stayed? Um, when he went into the restricted section, it went back. Went back, okay. And you mentioned that you also saw a red star before these two appeared, correct? Yeah. Are you sure that these two aren't like a part of Bathon? Is like y'all related now? She takes a good look at both of you. She's like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> Never right. heard of a guy named Bathon at all. Yeah. I don't want to be a god. Well, um, good news. I don't think that you would become one. Well, now I want to be one because you don't believe in me, Dorian. <laughs> 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 Well, we so just met, and you already don't believe that I could be a god, Doreen? Come on. I always told well, myself that I can, most I can, people can. I can do it. <laughs> I'm just going to prove to you that I can do it now, Doreen. That's my new goal. Well, if, if you ever do become a god, I will eat I, my own book. <laughs> I am going to <laughs> donate a goddamn powerful artifact within the next 500 years, Doreen. Okay. <laughs> Not how one becomes a god, to my knowledge. Um... Oh, that's how I'm going to prove that I'm a god now. I'm going to come in here the god way. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be like, hey, now I have a powerful artifact. <laughs> now I want to donate it. <laughs> well, I will be happy to accept your donation. <laughs> if that day ever were to come. God damn it. Well, do you have any other questions about the paintings in the library or um, the Kraken one seemed cool. 
the Kraken one. But we is... do want to go um, talk to Wyatt. All right. Then she will escort you guys. Uncle Wyatt. Wyatt. What? Walter Wyatt. Walter Wyatt. Walter Wyatt. Uh, she will escort you guys to the entrance of the Gallery of Remembrance, and then you guys make your way over to the repository. Sure. Yep. I would say so. I, I, I'll lead them over. Don't I, like, give her a hug goodbye. Repository. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, with me. Good. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. So, you guys make your way over to the repository. Um, you see large cells that extend very high into the ceiling, and um, each uh, shelf has dozens and dozens of artifacts on it. Um, it can be everything from a hairbrush to a large weapon, uh, suits of armor. It's looks like regular items, but when you get closer to it, you see like these wavy fields of magical essence that are coming from the shelves themselves to like contain the stuff that's in them. And, um, the corridor extends down and across the way you see a desk with an owl sitting there that has a very large magnifying glass and they are studying a ring. I want to call out, um, uncle just to like, I don't want to scare any more of my family members besides. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why, uh, looks up and, um, recognizes you. And he's like, Oh, Quill. Hello. Hello. Hope you're Put doing the well. ring down. Yes, I'm doing very well. What brings you here? Well, I wish I could just say it was um, for a friendly visit, but I um, actually have two guests with me. Um, this is Maestro and Chico. Hello. Hello. Um, Maestro has free reign. Chico does not. Um, <laughs> I have been judged poorly. <laughs> not as bad as you could be judged, but... Well, you're here, so... That's He's true. Here. <laughs> um, but we had a quick question. Um, see, they they appeared by when I was having lunch. One of the stars, um, the roof, uh, a star turned red, and they appeared at my desk. They didn't come through the hall. Um, ah, Aunt Doreen said that you might know anything, something about this. I do, I do. Um, that's been a long time. Um, How long exactly, Wyatt? Oh, <laughs> I long? say maybe seven hundred and years, give or ch- take a couple of years change. Seven hundred. Yeah. Told you. About the that looks good for her age. That's crazy. <laughs> oh, don't ever tell her I told you how old she is. Oh, I won't. It'll slip out, but I won't tell you it was you. <laughs> oh, no, tell please you. don't tell her. It's going to oh, slip no. out. Oh. Are you, oh, wait, are you, are you, are you, uh, Mr. Doreen? Uh, d- uh yes. Doreen is my wife. <laughs> okay. Yes. She what's can... your wife's favorite, what's your wife's favorite artifact in here? Oh, ah, I keep that in my vault. Um, it's, how do I describe it? It is, um, it's this little box. And when you open it, there's another box in that box. And when you open it, there's another box in that box. And it kind of continues on for a while. But then when you finally open up the last box, it, uh, will basically take you for about 20 minutes or so to your own personal paradise. That's dangerous. Extremely. How? People commit suicide when they come back. All right, that makes sense, I guess. Yeah. Usually (laughs) once they've experienced paradise, they don't want to 
realize yeah. how hell the rest of it is, huh? Yeah. I think that's but, more uh, of an indictment on... Uh... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's the most, God, this said, place that's is the terrifying. Most thing? Uh, is that what you asked, Eric? Is it like a is it like a hundred percent suicide rate? No. Look into this thing. No, if you have a strong will, usually you come out of it fine. But pretty strong. People will. with yeah, people with weaker wills can <laughs> say we don't try this. I'm not oh, saying no, I want to try it. I'm just not. saying like I. But what was the I initial question? I just wanted to know what it was that was their favorite. Oh, the favorite. Okay. Oh, okay. It's called a piece of paradise. A piece of paradise. Yes. And it's like a Russian nesting doll type thing. Yes. To get to the piece of paradise. Mm -hmm. Do you then have to put everything back in? Uh, it no, it, it just kind of does it itself. Uh, each each little box uh, is basically um, takes you somewhere. And then by the time you get to the middle, you reach paradise. It's a very interesting artifact, but I I keep it in there. So who is that from? But why is it your favorite? Oh, uh, well, it's it's Doreen's favorite. It's uh my uh probably my sixth or seventh favorite. I have <laughs> many things in here. <laughs> oh, oh, so then we got a whole curated favorite. list. Perfect. I love okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, who donated that? Oh, um, I think who donated that? Have you ever looked into it? Uh, I believe it was donated by three different deities. They worked on it together. Um, it was, uh, oh, I don't even remember their names. Um, it was the one of the gods of chaos. It was um, one of the celestial gods, and I believe it was um, worked on by the Unseemly Court as well. Huh. They each kind of put their own little spins into different layers of the box. Wow. Yeah. And you've never looked into it? I've never seen the Paradise? Oh, I I've gone there once. Uh, I didn't want to go back though. It's it's not healthy to dwell. Dwell on all that, yeah. Yeah. It's better to look at it as an, almost like a trip. Like oh, like I just went to another. It's not. It's almost more healthy to think that it's not real. Real? Yes. Is it a real place? Sends you I, to a real place. I'm not is sure. It like a, is it like a drug trip? Yeah, I want to use this thing so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't let you. <laughs> oh, my God. That is why it's in uh, one of my personal vaults instead of out here on the shelves. You won't hmm. be able to handle it. It's it's mostly for um, people who looked into its safety. You can't handle uh, all the cock you'll you'll smoke. <laughs> the the what now? <laughs> all the cock. What? Oh. The giant the, cock. The, the dick and ball. Yeah. Everyone has <laughs> their own paradise. I say it, my favorite, <laughs> Malik Dick and Ball. <laughs> the musician. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful band. <laughs> Some real tear tear jerkers. Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Stupid. Anyway, why are you here again? <laughs> <laughs> you seem to have gotten distracted. That happens a lot with us, sorry. Um, we've known it each happens other a lot like, with me as well. <laughs> we've known each other for like three days, and we've done like a couple hours worth of worthwhile work. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the beginning of a wonderful friendship. You know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. 
<laughs> we'll or see perhaps you'll roll. hate each other. Or perhaps we'll hate each other. Yeah, that's totally. Yeah. Right. It's a fine line. So we know. Did we Let's get see. the answer? Did we get the answer about leak? Oh Did no! Oh, I'm so sorry. I was distracted. What we were here about. Sorry. <laughs> By the piece of paradise. Uh, yeah, let's see. Sorry. Um, you wanted to know about the red star, correct? Yeah. Well, know we came here. If you'll follow me, I can um, probably explain. Let's go. Uh, Is it not like this light? Computer froze. There we go. So, I think we should wait till he gets back. Do you want to take a, a short break? Oh, uh, sure. We can break here. Um, we will be right back. Thank you all. Oh, I did not see. Oh, oh do we want to oh. do we want to come back? Yeah, we'll come back. Okay. What? Yeah, well, actually, I am so left. sorry. Okay, we're good. Uh <clears throat> I got my switch. It's so working. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. I don't want to leave it in the mailbox I'd have run down there. <laughs> oh yeah, no. <laughs> Which switch was it? Uh, the Tears of Kingdom one. Oh, that's dope. So I heard I it's really that. nice. I'm super excited. Now I just have to do my data transfer later, but that's a different story. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so Wyatt basically just explained like what uh, the artifact piece of paradise was that your okay. camp was super interested in. Um, and then you guys asked about the Red Star, so he led you over to his desk and... Um, We'll continue. Uh, Sweet. So, yeah, sorry about that. Oh, no, you're fine. Um, so he leads you over to his desk, and he starts uh, rummaging through some of his drawers, and then he pulls out this ledger, and he starts flipping back several, several hundred pages until he lands to a certain spot. And um, he was just like, oh, here it is, here it is. So on the day that the Red Star appeared, there was an artifact that appeared in the library. Um, it didn't stay in the library, however. We attempted to look at it. Uh, this was back when I was an apprentice. Um, it was uh, an arrow. Uh, this arrow was made of... Um, kind of a, a strange substance it takes on the properties of its surrounding um if we touched it to wood it became wood if we touched it to stone it was stone um like we even alien. yes we even tested it in fire stuff like that uh we put it next to stardust pretty much anything that you put it next to it will camouflage or chameleon itself wow um when uh, we went on break to, you know, eat lunch as we do, uh, the arrow had disappeared, and um, we weren't able to locate it since. But we found out Wait. that. Sorry, Maestro Chico. You said when you got here, it was through. Three statues pointing bows at another statue at a book with our family crest on it, right? Yes. Yeah, there were two statues with arrows two. pointed okay. at one holding the book with your guys's. Interesting. Can you tell me more about it? Inside a crystal mountain. <laughs> <laughs> it was inside a crystal mountain. Uh, we were in the Feywild. Mm-hmm. And we got we we had to fight these crystal monster things. Pulled us through to like another crystal dimension thing. We fought them. We got out. 
found this like crystal key um that when we got to that place with the portal statues and shit and the portal in the middle um put that crystal key into the chest of the one that was holding the book it opened the portal and we went through it and we ended up here so interesting that's fascinating hmm well the information we were able to gather is um in order for the arrow to change properties it has to pierce something so i assume when you found the crystal perhaps it had pierced part of the crystal mountain that you came from and that's why the arrow was made of crystal so that was the arrow we found i mean it would be one hell of a coincidence if you found an arrow and you came from a red star and the last time that that happened bethon came in here and the arrow was made of a, a shadowy material and they also fell through a red star do you know anything about the red star and what am i uh signify well each star represents a different plane and normally because of the separation between the two the stars kind of just exist out there but somehow with this arrow it perhaps allows you to pass through and the red star represents some um, the magical energy that covers it to be torn for a moment. So perhaps this arrow is allowing you to pass through. The arrow come back? Did we just miss it? Arrow here with us? Um, Stuck I, it in the statue. Can I, I... Can I think if I've ever both quarters at all? That might I'm, be like that. I'm sorry, you cut out. Oh, uh, could I, um, like, could I think back to like the like you know just with how long I've been um, in like the cham chamber of um, apprehend deliverance? Um, if an arrow has ever appeared, there. um, like not that, an arrow that fits that. Not one that matched that description. Okay. Um, when uh, I, I believe that when you guys uh, jammed the arrow into the statue, you didn't um, take it with you. You kind of let go of it and then got sucked into the portal. Right. That makes sense. Should have kept it. <laughs> um, Why do we need it? Just to see what the fuck it is, you know? Yeah. Yeah. If it's, the, if it's the same arrow, like, mm -hmm. what was it doing there, you know? But if Bethan's a god, why would he come through with an arrow? Would you happen to know that, Uncle? Uh, Bethan wasn't a god yet. He was kind of stuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he didn't have the power to pass through. I'm assuming he needed this arrow in order to do that. Um, we did do some research on this arrow, and it seems like wherever this arrow pierces is where that portal that you spoke of will appear. And once the arrow is used, it goes somewhere. But we weren't too sure about all the information on the portal, um, but the portal seems to be connected to the library itself, which unfortunately is one of the only sources of knowledge that doesn't appear in the library is information about the library to protect it. Hmm. So not even the, the portals of access, there, there wouldn't be knowledge in this library. 
No, that would be extremely dangerous if people knew exactly how to teleport here at any time. But these were set up, you're saying, by um, the guy. Um, well, what's his name? Bathon. Right? Um, we aren't sure how Bathon found this portal. How, how did you find the portal? We... We're just... told of it. There is a portal yeah. in Feywild. So you just heard of a rumor. Interesting. Well, well from we what were we... Looking, what we were oh. looking for was a portal not here specifically. We were looking for a portal to get back to the material plane. I see. And we, had, I had heard of a portal inside this mountain range. I had no idea that it was a portal to here. And that is where we encountered the two statues with the arrows. And then the one holding the book. Interesting. To my knowledge, there's only one of these portals, but it's not bound to one plane. It seems that the arrow is able to go anywhere. And once it finds its target and pierces somewhere, the portal is then teleported there. Does Bathon have any relation to the Feywild that you know of? No, as far as we know, Bathon came from the Shadowfell. So perhaps the portal was in the Shadowfell when he found it, and once the arrow disappeared from here, it must have gone to the Feywild or somewhere else. But I assume the Feywild, since that's where you came from. Hmm. Unfortunately, I have limited information, but what, from what you've given me has helped, and I will definitely add that to my notes on the artifact. Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry we couldn't provide more. No, that is perfectly fine. You've you've definitely helped with the research of this. Um, Grandma Edith was talking about something, um, finding something in the library that would help. Um, if we found out more about how we got here, we could find out more about how to get back to the plane that we're going we're trying to go to um perhaps they insisted that you would be able to um help us with this journey from the library you would have the most knowledge of these portals well the only one that knew about this portal before um, was Bathon, and um, before he entered the restricted section, he he basically visited different sections of the library. Um, he had restricted access, of course, but. Um, he was mostly just looking into research on how to become a god. And when the information he was finding wasn't as helpful as he thought it would be, he got frustrated. And he was one of the only guests that threatened some of the librarians here. Um, when that happened, um, we basically, in a way, banished him to the restricted section. Hmm. Um, once you're there, usually you're trapped there unless you know what you're looking for. And um, we have a, an artifact that helps guide you 
when you're in the restricted section to the places you need to go in order to get out. Otherwise, you kind of get stuck there. Um, unfortunately, Bethon had a journal, and um, when we banished him to the restricted section, we weren't able to take the journal from him. But I believe that Bethon had information on this portal in that journal. So you're saying someone with... <clears throat> Someone that would need to seek out the information in this journal would be given privilege to access the restricted section with the object? Yes, but it would be extremely dangerous, and we haven't... Usually the people who are here are family, and we weren't willing to send someone that was family with us to do something so dangerous. And unfortunately, the only people who are able to visit us are gods, and they aren't allowed in the restricted section under any circumstances. It was one of the only rules that we were given when the library was created. So Bathon is still there. If he's still alive. But it is possible that Bethon has died since then. It has been a few hundred years. When he was when you banish someone to the restricted section, do you banish them to like a specific room? Is it like a jail cell or um, do you just um, let them free roam in whatever they, you they're, have? The restricted section in itself could act as a prison. Um, it's not one room, it's many, many rooms. And if you don't have the artifact that guides you, you get lost. Okay, got it. <clears throat> So you're telling me um, knowledge about this, these portals, the only one that um, would have it is Bathon. He has a journal, um, but it, he has it with him in the restricted section, and it's very yes. dangerous to go. Um, so would would we would we be given access should should we sh should we go like should we want to go i mean i haven't been in i, I wouldn't okay. want you to go quill it's <laughs> extremely dangerous but i mean the choice isn't up to me I mean, you got to talk to grandma again. Probably. But if she thinks that you can handle it, I'd be willing to lend you the artifact. Um, I, I do. I mean, we need to find a way to get home. And Grandmother Edith um, told us to, this is how, we ha we have to find knowledge of, like, how we got here. And so if Bathan has that knowledge, then we have to, we have to ask him. Very well. Um... Is there a safe way to ask him when you go to the restricted section? Have you ever been? Do you have any advice on how to... I have only been to the restricted section once in my life, and that was, I didn't see Bathon there. As I said, like, it's many, many rooms. Um, the object I just went guide there. you, right? Yes. Did you um, have the object with you when you went? 
Of course. I would, would never go back there without it. I was only there to help maintain um, one of the uh, parts of the entrance to the restricted section. There's a uh, well, I suppose it, it doesn't hurt to tell you. Um, in Doreen's library um, gallery, there's a, a painting, and um, that painting is actually the entrance to the restricted section. It's blended in with the other paintings. Doreen's and, painting? Yes. Which one? One of them. Um, I believe... It's a painting called Honor. It's of a, a knight. Oh, okay. Oh. I Can't we see that one? About that one? Um, now, I will warn you, in order to enter the restricted section, it doesn't just let you in, even with the artifact... The artifact just guides you once you're there. The restricted section is a series of tests. And unfortunately, in order to open up the next chamber, you have to clear the first chamber. Before we do this, is there a place where we could sleep? <laughs> Yes. Um, <laughs> For three episodes. He's like, Please. Please, can we sleep? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's definitely places that you can sleep, but I'm sure you're hungry we as well. Now. Okay. I mean, we did, we did eat a lot of, of Quill's lunch as well. Or I should say, I did eat a lot of Quill's lunch. You wouldn't mind being so gracious <laughs> and hospitable as to keep us for the night yeah um of course uh Before first um this journey yes let me uh wrap this up quill um yeah you uh you could take them to one of the guest rooms um I'm, i'll get with edith and find out if um, she would allow you in the restricted section while you rest. We'll get you some food and some sleep regardless, though. Okay, yeah. Um, I will take them right over then, and I'll be in my room. Um, I'm not going um, <laughs> to... Yeah. Us, no, need you to. took us where? Uh, to the guest room. Okay. I'm going to take you to the guest room. So um... we will talk about the restricted area morning okay restricted area <laughs> so um quill takes you to a place that um it's basically a, a section that's just outside of the main part of the nest but there are like some guest rooms for people who stay in the library multiple nights um it's a it's a very comfortable room there's like beds uh they bring you food and stuff like that um, there's, uh, a large window that also, like, kind of lets you look into the astral sea. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. So I did not make a map stay. of it, though, because this is, a awesome. just a place where you sleep. <laughs> um, don't break anything. Okay. Uh, but make yourself comfortable. And then, would I be the one to bring them food? Uh, no, other people would bring them food. Okay, yeah. Um, with, uh, in terms of eating, did, uh, I'm not sure what's being made or anything like that. Um, or what the guests will be eating, but you'll get food. If, I don't know if you're still hungry after um, your long lunch, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you're still hungry after you ate my lunch. <laughs> Yeah, uh, well, I'm trying to be nice about it. Well, I mean, we, I, I, we, I can, offer, we can take all the food but... we can get. Yeah, right. and they do. They bring you um, stews and 
sandwiches and stuff like that. Yes. There's some rotisserie uh, meats. Yes. Ooh. Yes. I yeah, like, it's a I little like smorgasbord. Owls roll. <laughs> um. Okay. So we we long rest. We can reset. Yep. Everybody, long rest. Reset. Okay. I think we cool. should take a break here. Yeah. Okay. Cool. cool. Sounds good. Uh, we will be right back. <laughs> All right. Welcome back. Um, you guys were able to take your long rest. Everyone should be at full hit points. Um, basically, uh, in the morning, Wyatt is going to collect Quill, and then they'll go to your room, and um, Wyatt will explain that he spoke with Edith, and um, while you were sleeping, Edith uh, basically judged you guys again. <laughs> nothing to worry about <laughs> and uh she deemed that you guys have a potential to come back so she will allow you to go to the restricted section given the circumstances and um in order to help you she wants to give each of you two um health potions Is that including me? If you're going with them. I, I'll go with them. I'm curious. Um, I asked Edith if I can go with them. I know generally we're not supposed to, but I'm also to make sure that Chico is not supposed to fuck anything up. So, <laughs> true. if I may roll for persuasion, <laughs> I have a responsibility, Grandma, to make sure that he doesn't mess things up I can't do that if you let him in there without me. You're so responsible. It's <laughs> <laughs> so admirable. Oh, you you bear, so spare no mind to my own <laughs> self requirement or self like want. Just yes, it is to ensure Chico doesn't. Oh, she's so proud of you. <laughs> I really am. You've always been one of my favorites, Quill. <laughs> I do what I can. Well. <laughs> if it's part. something that you truly desire, I will let you go with them. And in that case, I want you to take this heaping pile of superior healing potions to help you. Uh, <laughs> it should be, <laughs> uh, it should be about two of you each. Here you go. Nice. <laughs> and she just and you okay. six potions of superior healing. Inventory. So you six, each so get probably two. two. Each. Yeah. Yes. You said what? Uh, superior healing. Superior. Ooh. Superior heal. Healing. Might need it. Healing. Potion uh, healing. If, superior. Found it. Got it. Yep. Okay. Yeah. If you try to do superior for superior, because it puts it into a bracket. Um. And then you said two for each. So I'll. I'll yeah. Let two. Yes. So you give us. Okay. I want to make sure that my grandson comes back, so you better take care of him. And I mean it. (laughs) Fuck around. Don't make me go in there after you. Well, it'd be nice if you did. We'd probably be lost. (laughs) You do have an artifact, you're fine. What, what's the Shut up! You have an artifact. You're fine. Shut up. <laughs> what? What's the artifact? Did they give it to us yet? Yes, it's um a bracelet. Ooh, VIP it's a bracelet. Bracelet. It, yeah, it's a it's a little uh, <laughs> wristband. <laughs> <laughs> Automatically puts X's on the back of your hand. <laughs> Shows that you're underage. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so it's a those, it's a little wait, bracelet. Potions, sorry, those potions of heal. Those are just regular potions of healing. Superior. 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 Um, what's the bracelet made out of? Do they call it anything? Is it like a bracelet of something, or 
Is that what um, it, it wouldn't be in the D D compared to one. This is like a Yeah, I know. I'm just writing it down. Oh. Um it is a bracelet of guidance. guidance. And it's made of uh platinum. Okay. And it kind of looks like um like the bracelet kind of looks like two feathers on either side and like the feathers are curled at the end. Interesting. Okay. Sounds good. <clears throat> um who puts it on? You want to rock, paper, scissors it? Or... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's rock, paper, scissors it. Do you want a D20? Uh, who's the highest? Go for I it. I remember how to roll on here. Is it slash R? Yeah, D20. Oh, no. 14. No modifiers. Eight. Now balls. I'll wear it. I want to roll also. Oh. Do it. Shit. You want to get on in that quill? Oh! <laughs> I mean, it, it, oh! <laughs> Obviously, it's going to go to my grandson. I don't trust the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> Take the bracelet and I'll put it over my talon. You're, all, you're, all, you're both terrible at rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Edith is uh, going to put the no bracelet on the grill <laughs> and it's going to fit to uh, your wrist. We just keep on okay, doing so. rock at each other until she hands <laughs> rock, it to Quill. Rock. And then Quill just <laughs> gently puts the paper over the rock and is just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I just take my towel and I'm just like... <laughs> <laughs> paper. <laughs> rock. Shit. Rock. Really rock. Shit. Work. Paper. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, uh, Quill has the bracelet. Yes. And, and you guys a... have your potions... Yes. Alright. Um, um, you can't see this. It's Amy. John Sinock. What does a bracelet do again? Do, it, do, 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 do. Thank you. Um, it <laughs> guides you in the restricted section so you don't get lost. So okay. if none of you have the bracelet, you'll get lost back there and you won't be able to find your way out. Okay. Just want to make sure I'm putting the uh, note pro properly. <laughs> yeah. So it basically guides you to where you need to go in the restricted section. So if you're going back there for something specific, this bracelet mm -hmm. will help you get to where you're needing to go versus if you're just aimlessly wandering back there. Okay. What is happening? <laughs> Friendship. Yeah, I think the Step Brothers are back at it. <laughs> <laughs> They're unhinged. <laughs> okay. So you guys Yes, please save us, Lewis. Save us. Let us do anything else than what we're doing now. I'm sorry. Nope, you are fine. You are perfectly fine. So that's true. So uh you guys end up going back to the gallery. We're just naturally and... very musical. Oh, Extremely. Right. Um so <laughs> you guys go back to the painting and um once you are in the gallery, you remembered that the painting was honor, and you make your way over to the painting of the night. And when you stand in front of it, um, you notice that the bracelet is starting to glow in like a like a type thing. And with every beat, like you see like a a glow, and then it flashes back to normal. As you get closer to the painting, the glow becomes more consistent. Okay. And eventually, um, this was awesome. you guys reach, yeah, when you guys uh, reach through, uh, your hand kind of, like, goes through into the painting. Kind of like, um, 
You ever play Mario 64? You jump into the paintings? Yes. Woo! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> you guys uh, eventually leap your way into the painting. Um, unless, was there Let's anything go. else you wanted to do before you go in here? Let's go. <laughs> Are you guys feel prepared? In, you got no, food? I'm cool with that. I think we, we, you guys have food, I'm guessing. I want to be extra can i make an acrobatics roll to try to do three back jumps so i backflip into the painting absolutely yeah. please do <laughs> backwards long jump yeah. into the painting yeah i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm doing Dude. speed running short yeah. <laughs> just crouch back blj right. set up right, like a go. i want to set up something to where i can like leap and like slide into the painting absolutely got a 14 with a plus six i don't know if that's enough <laughs> hopefully all right well, uh, i got a 14 yeah I'd say that you successfully do three backflips into the painting <laughs> in the true Mario fashion. Yeah. <laughs> and then, see. Eric, what D20 did you want to do? Two. Are you I want to like, set up like a. <laughs> <laughs> I want to set up like one of the one of the um, like set it up to where like, I want to do like a like a cop sliding on top of like the. The hood oh, of the, the hood car. of the car, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you do a little run, and uh, you stop for a second, and then you realize that you need something to slide on, so you pull one of the benches over, and it squeaks extremely loud as you push it like closer to the wall, and then you do a run, and you Good. off of it. Go ahead and roll a Drop. acrobatics check yeah. for me. Alright. Acrobatics. Oh. It, oh, I did it the wrong way again. <laughs> Plus two. Ooh. The 17. Dude. You just, just like they do in the movies, you slide across the bench straight into the painting. Nice. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, Maestro, do you do oh, anything was, or do you I just skin? I was the first one in. I just ran in. Oh, okay, <laughs> so you just casually walked in, and then these two. <laughs> yeah, you see me backflip through. <laughs> when I said "what what," that was me jumping in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I high five on the other side. Fuck you. All right, now man. what the fuck is it? I, I put a high. Why I is a it a of... huge creature? Hold on. What the fuck? <laughs> Why is this thing at least nine feet tall? <laughs> You see, Lewis, Lewis, I trusted you, <laughs> and I gave you six superior healing potions. So I don't want to what hear anything. What in the Bowser's Tower <laughs> stage? <I> trust you. <laughs> we have to we have to grab by his coattail and spin him around. Yeah, and throw nope. him off. Yeah, and then he gets. I used to play a lot of Mario, and I watched a shit like, ton of speedruns yeah. of it. So. I yeah. fucking love that game so we much. It's so good when he wakes up. It's oh like my that, god! Sunshine and Odyssey are my three favorites. Yep, yep. Those are good ones. All right, um, but enough Mario talk. Let's can we talk our way? <laughs> possibly. Um, so, in the depiction of the painting, you saw the same night uh, with the sword, and um, the they were basically like standing in a stone room. Now that you've entered, you see that the stone that they were standing on is a large stone platform and all around you is this green smoke and quill you actually recognize this green essence um you see something similar when you train in the crypt of guidance and that kind of has to do with your family's ability to be able to see something specific oh. so the essence around you is kind of made of that same material okay um do i know anything about the smoke away from organizing it should i make like a role for that um yeah, go ahead and uh, roll a history check to see if you were paying attention as you were growing up. Right. Fair enough. Plus one, I got a 17. Uh, yeah, I'd say that you'd know what this is. This is um, basically the essence of spirits. 
So um, uh, the green. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I, I would look to my show and she go and um, kind of look around. Um. <clears throat> um. I would just look at look around and I look at Chico and uh, my Maestro. Um, I say we tread carefully. It looks like the dead may be watching what we do here. And then I throw my net. No I'm kidding. Yeah, <laughs> ended at that. But uh, yeah, Dead. as you guys, uh, you don't know. Um, as Will you guys enter you? the painting, um, you guys kind of float down instead of falling. You like just float down into place. Maestro casually floats down and lands, followed a moment later by Quill doing a series of flips before like <laughs> landing, <laughs> and then uh, Chico. Uh, kind of like slides down and then I don't want to say belly flops but kind of like lands on his side but like more gently because it was like a slower fall but you weren't <laughs> expecting it to be such a long drop so you kind of like land on your side and then get back up and dust your <laughs> feathers off and you're like no one saw anything nobody saw anything <laughs> and then you stick here <laughs> yeah you're right <laughs> I'm ready for fisticuffs uh Across the way, you see the knight. Um, he's standing there, like more relaxed. And then once he sees you, he, uh, you know, like gets in a more like upright position, and then sees Chico enter, and then just kind of like tilts his helmet for a second, and then slowly uh, pulls out his sword. Oh God! Um, <laughs> okay, so we do have to fight this wait, guy. Wait, 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 okay. wait, wait! Excuse me, wait. Um, are you Bathor? I am not Bathor. Oh, God damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> fuck it. I was hoping it was going to be easy. Uh, I thought that would work. Um, <laughs> we, we came looking for, for Bathor. Can you point us? We will, we will pass. We will cause you no harm. Really love to not have to fight you because you look like a big scary person. Hey, hey, big night guy, you scare me. I'm scared of <laughs> hey, you. Hey, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 big, you're big night guy. Hey, by the way, I'm scared of you. <laughs> I am familiar with Bathor. He passed through and passed my challenge. Oh. If you wish to go past me, you must also pass my challenge. Oh, I see. Okay. He and drew what, his sword, right? Challenge? You must defeat me. Oh, fucking I pull out my daggers shit, and step forward. God uh, damn it. Quill, being someone that has lived his entire life in a library, is kind of itching for this. <laughs> <laughs> I like kind of like take one single step blind. forward, and you just see me like pull out two daggers. I don't say anything, and I don't like be overly aggressive. But if Chico and Maestro look at all, like I'm not, I'm fully into it. Yeah. <laughs> like you can tell. Absolutely. Um, if I deem you worthy after this challenge, you will be permitted through. If not, I will send you back where you came from. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, shit, I'll speak. Fuck. Actually, yeah, I, I'll, I'll speak up. I was like, as one of the keepers of these libra as, as one of the keepers of the library, um, the one of which you, um, Stay. Um, I refuse to fail this challenge. I accept your challenge, and I appreciate the combat. I look forward to seeing how you do. Okay. I'm like completely not paying attention to see if Maestro or Chico are like at all like ready to fight. Uh, like yeah, I'm just like, I'm ready, yeah. I was just about to say, <laughs> uh, yeah. I, I am like I'm readying a spell. I'm probably readying a fairy fire. Okay. Um, the knight is going to put his sword into the ground for a second, and then he's going to bow. <clears throat> and then re-pick up his sword. Yeah, I, like, take Spectral. one hand and, like, put it over, like, kind of like, like when, like, someone, like, bows, like, with one hand over, like, their stomach, pretty much. <laughs> I, like, bow like that. Yeah, I bow as well. 
Whenever you're ready for combat, I am as well. You may begin. Um, I cast the fairy. All right. All right. Um, is there any difference between level one and level two? It's not saying anything. I'm going to cast bark skin on myself. Let me see. I'm reading very fire right now. Okay, second. <clears throat> Each of Outline. Okay. Well, first of all, what color do you pick? Because <laughs> that's part of the spell. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you can choose your color. Oh. Uh... Yeah. You get a pick uh, in a 20 foot cube within range is outlined in blue, green, or violet light. Your choice. Blue, green, or violet? Mm hmm. Green. Green, all right. Yeah. Um, creature in the area when the spell is cast is also outlined in the light if it fails the dexterity saving throw. For the duration, objects and affected creatures shed dim light in a 10 foot radius. Any attack roll against an affected creature or object has disadvantage if the attacker can see it and the affected creature or object can't benefit from being invisible. Any attack roll against an affected creature or object has advantage. No, oh, I'm sorry, has advantage. Yeah. My bad. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, it doesn't yeah. look like it does anything so, from casting it at other levels. Yeah, so the only difference from a mechanic standpoint is be like if the knight had a dispel, so like if you cast at first level, because it's a first level spell, uh, but if you cast at second level, they couldn't yeah. dispel it without having a dispel of a higher level. Uh, let's cast. So it, it would. I don't know what this knight has, but that would be the only benefit of like upcasting. Uh, so yeah. it looks like um, they cast a dexterity saving throw, and then if they fail it, they uh, are also oh, outlined. Dex fourteen, yeah. Yeah, dex fourteen. Um, should I? What do you think? Should I cast it at one or two? Is it just I... one? One. Don't okay. know. Yeah, I'll cast it at one. Because I don't right, think but... I don't think he would have a okay a spell. All right, I'm one second. One spell for my level. One. Yeah, one second. Okay, no problem. Pretty good. Yeah. And then I, th I do have sleep, but I don't think level, it will affect. So like, him. sleep something you got to do when he's like close to dying almost, right? Because that's like it takes up. However many hit points he has left. Oh really? No. Um. Or sleep. A no. So uh, with with sleep, you I can't remember the exact number of rolls, but the way it works is like, let's say you roll a fifth, like a that's like uh, it's pretty high roll. So let's say you roll, roll like a thirty. Okay. Um, so yeah, let's say you roll thirty, right? Um, and let's say one creature, like a goblin, has like seventeen HP, and there's three of them. If you have thirty HP. You don't have to. If you have left over, you can just hit more creature. Oh, okay. right. Yeah. But it's not. Yeah. It doesn't apply to their current health. It applies to their max health. Well, it, sure. w it would apply, but it just wouldn't actually put them to sleep. I think it only puts them to sleep if it you know, goes over their health that they currently have. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just realized I didn't grab my dice. No, it, it was still put into sleep. It just. If you put him lower, if there's multiple enemies, it just goes lowest health points first. So like, just like that. First. But not max health. <laughs> In ascending the current, but like if you roll under, you can still put them to sleep. Like it doesn't have to go over their map. All right, so it's a dexterity saving throw. Uh, they fail. At least, unless I'm wrong. Could be wrong. All they right, so you guys, nice. yeah, they failed it. So you guys have advantage when you attack this object. Cool. For 10 minutes. Yeah, for 10 minutes. Oh, so, concentration um, up to one minute, sorry. One minute. Okay. Oh, wait, I am wrong. I'm sorry. You are right. So, yeah, we would not want to cast sleep if it's full health, if we if, think it has yeah, a lot of health. Yeah, and then we'll get, we'll get them down. For some reason. Oh. Apologies. Up to 10 feet? Or what was it? Oh, 10 foot radius. Yeah, shed light. <clears throat> And then I cast Bark Skin on my. 
Okay. All right. Um, so, fairy fire, bark skin, quill. Do you do anything? Uh, no. All right. Cool. Everyone, go ahead and roll initiative. For me. Rolling initiative. Got a sixteen. Yeah, okay, uh, right <laughs> <clears throat> Ooh, natural twenty. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, Maestro. Oh wait, does my initiative actually take my first one? I didn't realize initiative actually worked there. I have an eleven because I rolled it in a uh, two. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, Wait, so what? I didn't realize you can make a roll in D&D Beyond. It didn't go over to roll 20, but yeah, no. Take my initiative check for 11. Oh, I mean... Nah, that's okay. that was the first one. It's the first one. Let's. We'll, 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 we, I, I made the roll. I'll, I'll eat. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. You can go first. It, it doesn't matter. It's okay. Just right. uh, make sure that the rest of them are... Oh, wait. You did roll in here, though. I did, but I didn't realize if uh, the D and D Beyond one. I was trying to see if, if it would uh, click translate the stat, over. It'll make a roll. Yeah, but I, I don't really count those. Even if I click it, I just I just click it to see the pluses. Hmm. All right, it's up to y'all. I mean, yeah, we can do the roll twenty one. Yeah, it's it's fine. Right. Okay, so that would put Quill is top of the round. And then, what is your AC? Uh, 15. Mine is 13. Okay. And as long as I have bark skin, it's 16 for me. Okay. There's a concentration up to an hour, though, so I will okay. have concentration checks. And, and then, what's this? your normal AC? My normal? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's 12. Okay. Just so uh, I don't have to ask you later. Yeah. Is this like a knight? Basically? Does he look human? Uh, yeah. He's, uh, well, I mean, he doesn't look... He's in a human shape, but, like, you can't see any of his features. He's covered in metal all over. But it's like, um, a a metal that a knight would wear? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this looks like a knight. Um. Oh. And then, Maestro, what is your AC? Maestro? Yes. 13. 13. Okay. There we go. Now I don't have to ask you guys later. Okay. So top of the round, Quill, go for it. Um, let's see. So he's thirty-five away. So I'll just have to use my. Yeah. You're gonna use your what? Uh, dash. I just have oh, to okay. use my dash. Dash. Um, <laughs> are we allowed to move diagonally? Yeah. Okay. Very far, you're sixty feet away. 7 I want to like wrap Okay, and that'll be my turn. All right. Um next is <clears throat> Maestro. Um I want to I would like to cast um Okay. Uh, and can I also 
how many times can I do it? Can I give it out to another I believe so. I believe it's up to your level. Like, your level determines how many times you're able to cast it. Yeah, I have four uses. But I'm saying, okay, like, in a round. I mean, you can do action, bonus action, and movement. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, it says as a bonus action. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you can um, use your action to also do it, to do it twice. Oh, okay. I'll use it as a bonus action. Okay. And then I'll cast... Um, Vicious Mockery. Um, you wouldn't be able to cast Bardic Inspiration twice and Vicious Mockery. Just once. I guess you would. Okay. So... Okay, yeah. So you do Vicious Mockery, and then as a bonus action, you do Bardic. Are those level yeah. 2 or lower? Uh, uh, vicious Mockery? Um, so as a bonus action... It has to be a level two or lower spell. Uh, yes. So, yeah, bardic inspiration is a level two or lower. Uh, okay. Bardic inspiration is just part of the bard's features. Um, it would oh, okay, cool. Then yeah, you can do it. Yeah, it's a class feature. All right, cool. Thank you. Yeah, um, then yeah, you're able to do that. Okay. Is there a save for that, or...? Um, it must succeed on a wisdom saving throw or take one. <clears throat> okay. Have disadvantage on the next attack roll. Um, it rolled a 16. Uh, wisdom 14, so it saves it. Okay. So it doesn't take damage at all. Um... It says or it take damage, so I, I assume it doesn't. Yeah, so it wouldn't go through. Okay. All right, then that ends my turn. So I okay. Just I was trying to get okay. to advantage Six. on his next roll. Yeah. It's a torch. Okay, so next would be Chico. As primal savagery on myself. Okay. Very nice, very nice. And then I'm going to take out my wangs. And I'm going to take out my wangs. Your wangs. And I'm going to fly up to this motherfucker. Okay. Yeah. Because you're a monk, I just picture you kind of like a pigeon. How, like, when pigeons are upset, they just slap you with their wings a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not... <laughs> I'm not a monk, but... <laughs> oh... I know, like, you're a druid, but, like, I know, like, how the uh, pigeons do that, and it kind of reminds me of monks, like, how yeah. they, like, chop a lot. I just picture, like, <laughs> pigeons. What up? <laughs> I don't know why. I just have that so image I've... of you doing that. <laughs> well, that's 35 feet right there. Jeez. I'm gonna attack this motherfucker. All right, go for it. Well, it's a pretty good plus to hit for this thing. RD20. There's so many measurements going on. <laughs> oh, you can see that? Oh, my bad. I can. <laughs> yes. I can see everything that you guys do. Uh, my bad. So, unfortunately, That's a 15 just a 13 doesn't hit. to hit. Yeah, unfortunately, it misses. The armor is just a little bit too thick. <clears throat> Sharp. All right. Sharp nipples. <laughs> <laughs> so it is now the hey, Lewis. nice Sharp yes. nips. Sharp nips. Yeah, that's very unfortunate. <laughs> so the um, knight is going to uh, hold their sword out and say, "Very good. It is my turn." And they're going to take their sword and they're going to swipe it in a circle. So. It misses Quill. And with your buff, it misses Chico as well. 
So it oh, takes its yeah. sword and it swings in a circle and you're both able to jump over the sword as it swings along the ground. Oh, yeah. And with that, the knight kind of laughs. They're very good. Next, it's Quill's turn. Cool. Um, <laughs> as I, I jump should... up, I want Your to... Your fucking drawing blurs into it. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed it now. <laughs> Shart nip. I was like, what is that red mark on the ground? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sorry, Quill. <laughs> Go ahead. No, you're good. Uh, so as I jump up, I'm like coming down, and I'm going to try to make an for my dagger. Yep, go for it. That's twenty. That's nat. Uh, uh, yeah, so you hit. Uh, so how are we doing crits with your game? Are we doing it? Where we just double the damage, or do we roll the damage die twice? Uh, usually I double the damage, but that's okay. up to you. If you want to split it up, just tell me beforehand. No, no, no. I'll I'll just double the damage and then add one. Okay. So I'll do one d four first. So two, four, eight, and then I'm gonna roll my sneak attack damage. Okay. Because it's a finesse weapon. Seven. So eight, twelve, seven, nineteen. Okay. So yeah, I hit him for nineteen damage. I like jump up and like after like the sword swings and like I come down, I just like flip my dagger around and like try to like hit um find a weak point in his armor. Cool. Nice. Hell yeah. Um so as you do that, you kind of land right where the uh helmet and the uh, basically the chest of the armor hit and you just sink straight into both of the shoulders right there. Cool. Uh, next is Maestro's turn. Okay. Um, I'm going to give another bardic inspiration. Okay. Uh, Do it. It's wisdom save? Yeah, you wisdom save against 14. You're giving a bardic inspiration to Chico, right? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay yeah. Yeah, because... No, I didn't use mine, but I can only have it... You can only have one at a time. Yeah. You, you can, can give it to more people, body. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted to make sure you're not trying to give it to me, because I didn't need it. Uh, Unfortunately, yeah. they rolled a 19. Okay. Sorry about that. Yeah. Uh, Chico. Um, I don't think I'm going to move. You're like, yeah, fuck all that. I'm good. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna move. Okay. <laughs> Strategic non movement. <laughs> I wanna. And you, uh, with this guy has fairy fire on him, right? So I get advantage. I didn't roll with advantage last time, but that's okay. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, you guys have advantage. Oh, what but you already I rolled a nat 20. 20. Oh wait, no. It's a saving throw. So that It's a saving throw. throw. Yeah, I would. Yeah. Know. But you already rolled a oh, nat so 20. Have advantage. Yeah, Greg rolled a nat 20. He would, he would I rolled yeah. a nat 20. I can't get higher than yeah, that. So you're but good. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh Chico you rolled twice. Still? Yes, yes. Okay. I believe for 10 rounds. It's like a minute, right? Wow, or... nat 20. Wow, yeah. 20. I got a natural 20. Very good. It was just 20 plus two, so I got a natural 20 on that. All right. Go ahead and roll damage. Good news. Nat 20's hit. Is it a crit? <laughs> it is a crit. So do you do... Yeah, it's a crit, yeah. Hmm? You double yeah, the damage. Yeah, that's what we were talking about earlier. So we double the damage. You don't double your modifier, though. Okay. So I got yeah. an eight on the D10, so that's 16 acid damage to the baby. Nice. Nice. Uh, What'd you what'd you hit him with? I Acid. cast primal savagery on myself and it makes my eat of my talons and oh, shit. Oh shit. Like, okay, nice. That would poisonous a, um, or acidic. It would kill yeah. a small Victorian child. It would <laughs> absolutely yeah. melt their face off. That's and who knows, maybe that's who we're fighting. Maybe that's who we're fighting. We don't that's we don't see who they are in this. True. Huh? It's behind Can be on well, a set of armor. That would I was about to say that'd be very impressive. It's probably like a few Victorian children at that point. Yeah. <laughs> There's a whole whole orphanage yeah, in there. They're, they're in a trench coat <laughs> underneath. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> so it's, it's the knight's turn. Um, the knight is going to swing at uh, Chico. Whatever. Eh, whatever. Eh. And misses. After that, uh, it's going to um, basically take its sword and it's going to try to, with the uh, flat end of the sword, push Quill off. Because you're still kind of like stuck in his shoulders. Okay. Um, um, if he's is he trying to actually, oh, okay, cool. Never mind. I'll wait. I have a reaction I can maybe. Okay. Uh, roll a strength check for me, Quill. Thirteen. So unfortunately, you get uh, smacked and pushed five feet away. Okay. And that is the end of its turn. You don't take damage from it. It just kind of pushes you off. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, next is Quill's turn. Yeah, I'm gonna like, like dash back in. Obviously, just like I'm gonna take a step back in and make another attack. Do it. Uh, with advantage. Uh, Unfortunately, you miss. The armor on, is just too on. thick. I still have oh. my advantage. See? That's 24. Mm. Isn't isn't that three rolls? No, the other one was my saving throw. The plus one. St- strength saving throw. Oh, my bad. Oh, you're good. Yeah, so those are my advantage hits of plus six. It's good to have plus six. I got it. On my, uh, 24 does hit. <laughs> Sick. Um, because there's another one, I get another sneak attack, so that'll be a roll 1d4 plus four first. Damn it. That's a five. <laughs> I got a one okay. on that roll, but my uh, sneak attack damage with advantage also. But... Oh my gosh. I keep typing in a Discord command to look up GIFs. <laughs> Uh, roll 2d6. 6 plus 4, 10 sneak attack, so 15 total. Uh, piercing to Desmond. But... Okay. Guys are doing good. That's yeah, cool. like step back That's in cool. and like That's just cool. like go in with my. Uh, so like I originally oh, hit with my left right dagger and then I'm hitting with my left one this time. Okay. Next is uh, Maestro's turn. Um, I will. Um, cast Earth Tremor at level 2. Do it. Um, okay. Let's do it. Um. Here we go. It increases by 1d6. So, um, the deck save is 14. Unfortunately, it's a... It saved it? Yeah, I got a 17. Okay. On a failed save, a Hello, creature... Stop doing that. On a failed Sorry. save, um, a creature takes 1d6 bludgeoning and is knocked prone. Um, but it just says each creature other than you in that area must make a dexterity saving throw. So, it so everybody does. Ten, no, How big is the radius? Where I designate the, the earth tremor to be. So it's a 10 foot uh, area. So five Which is the same radius as the light. As the so anyone in there. Yeah. So this, this is now difficult terrain. That- okay, here I'll, I'll mark it. Oh, so just the... Okay, I see. Yeah. That doesn't mean he's dead, but it's just... Yeah. No, I got you. Okay. And then, um, how much damage did he take? Uh, he doesn't take it. Oh, okay. Um... Do you end your turn, or...? 
What up? Um, I, 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 <laughs> I walked over here. Okay. Right under the booby. Got it. Right under the shark tips. Well, I know it's hard to choose right or left. Okay, uh, next is uh, Chico's turn. <laughs> the battle screech. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> what do you decide to do, Chico? Gonna spin around this bad boy. Okay. <laughs> spin around right here. Don't hit Quill with this. Because it's a 15 foot. So it'll be like one, two, three, one. Do two. it, Quill. Take it. <laughs> Take it. Like that here. So it's not gonna it's not gonna hit Quill. I'm gonna cast Thunder Wave on this bad boy. Do it. So they make a constitution saving throw. 13? And it's a 14. Oh, they oh. failed. He failed it, so he takes 2d8 thunder damage. The way. Wink. 14. 14. 14. Very And he's also pushed 10 feet away from me. Um, it is affected by difficult terrain, so the movement out is halved until it's out. That's an interesting mechanic. If they're being shoved, is it the same with Thunder Wave? Oh, sorry. I was just speaking towards the difficult terrain. Oh, okay. Uh, that's an interesting question. Um, difficult terrain with Thunder Wave. Difficult terrain has no effect on force movement. Um, it's the okay. same idea behind like opportunity attacks. So opportunity attacks have to be made with like, like I can't take an opportunity attack even though he's getting pushed out of my ring because okay. it's force movement. Okay. Well, it's the same idea. His own volition. Yeah, exactly. So if okay. they chose to move, then we can take opportunity attacks. A difficult terrain would come into play. But any force movement, it will take that number and will uh, it will not like provoke anything else. All right, thank you. I was like, hmm. you guys have contradicting spells. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I have it a lot. I've like learned small things like that. <laughs> what do you want from me? I'm like, how does this interact? <laughs> <laughs> so I just learned. <laughs> I'm like, ah. no, I appreciate that. All right. Um, next is the knight's turn. The knight is going to circle around to Quill, and it's going to attack. Okay. Unfortunately, it hits. It hits. Um, can I use my reaction to add a? So I have a defensive duelist. Mm -hmm. When I am wielding a finesse weapon, which I am with my daggers. And another creature hits me with a melee attack. I can use my reaction to add a plus two to my AC. So it's at 17 for that attack off my reaction. Man, it still might hit, but I would, I would sit. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah, I need defensive duel to like parry the sword. <laughs> yeah. And it's going to use its second attack. Fuck. I can't do two reactions. So, hey, right, well, we'll see. <laughs> I'm sorry. That one also No, hits. it's fine. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, done. I'm taking that one. <laughs> Hey, it could have been two attacks, so yeah. It could have. Very well. You take ten damage. <coughs> cool. Cool, cool. Okay. Next is uh, Quill's turn. Yeah, I'm going to retaliate and also hit him. Or try to hit him with my dagger. 
That's a 22 to hit. I'm going to see if that I hits. can get the crit. Nope. Okay. Uh, so that will roll. 4 plus 4, and then, of course, and then 2d6, because I have advantage, so I get my sneak attack damage, 14 total. Okay. Uh, okay. That fairy fire comes in clutch for sneak attack, thank you. Yeah. It does. Oh. Do you get sneak attack when it's not engaged with any other... Yeah, so you can either, if you either have advantage... As long advantage, as you have advantage. Or oh, you don't okay. need advantage if there's a target within five feet. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. Good job. So the advantage allows me to do it without anyone around, but if we didn't have that, I would have to find a way to get advantage or you could easily get over here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that fire right. is clutching up right now. So. It is. Uh, my Astro, it is your turn. God, this thing is... Do it. Oh, that's a five. It fails. Um, so it does get disadvantage on its next attack. Excellent. That's the big thing. I don't really care how much damage this does. Um, wait. Um, 1d4 second damage. I don't think there's any modifiers. It's just a straight up. Okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. Um. Next I is. Oh. Right. It's not an attack roll. It's just a damage. Roll. So. Yeah. Oh, it's not. Advantage is only on attack rolls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. Next would be Chico's turn. I'm gonna. F Blanket. So give advantage even if the fairy. F and as I'm flying, I'm going to cast Primal Savagery on myself again. And I'm going to attack this motherfucker. The way. Um, does when fairy fire the language says any attack roll? Does that count for both or just hit to hit? Um, this is a damage roll that you were doing. I'm just saying, so I'm it, not four, but I don't know if like you're supposed to be getting So, it, it's it's to attack. It's not for damage dice. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. I got a 24. Alright, uh, you hit. That's seven acid damage. Okay. It's really good. What spell is that? It's a cantrip primal savagery. Wow. Oh, that's a cantrip? That's good. 1d10. Yeah. Damn. Yep, 1d10. Alright, next is but the ninth turn. I, I have okay, to like... Disadvantage here. Yes. Got two dice. Ooh, it misses. Second attack. This time it's going to aim at Chico. Ooh, also misses. Very uh, would that lucky. One, would, that not, would, that, would that one not get disadvantage? Or that one would? Both would. Okay. Because it's an attack roll. Okay. Um... Night ends its turn. The night's like uh, starting to breathe a little bit heavy now. Dude, my my rebukes are fucking him up. Yeah. What are you telling him? What what, what did? What, how do you insult him with vicious mockery? Dude, he's got clunky form. You know, he's not, <laughs> his yeah. movement is off. <laughs> um. He's a practice tech skill. <laughs> it is. Your lack of wave dashing is insult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's, he, he's, uh, you know, he's not living up to my schmoozman. Alright. Um, 
it's going to end its turn. It is Quill's turn. I'm swinging with my dagger. Let's see if I get a crit. But Lou, it does say on Vicious Mockery, it does say just next attack roll, not uh, attack rolls. Oh. It just, it says disadvantage on the next attack roll. Oh, okay. Then it does hit okay. Chico. I just want to be fair about that. Okay. Yeah, thank you for that. All right. Then God it damn it! Sorry. God damn it! Why'd you clarify? <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, Chico, you take 11 points of damage. Oh my! I'm sorry. Chico, what's your max HP? 32. 33. 33. Okay. So it just took a third of my health. <laughs> We got those potions for a reason, I guess. Uh, now it's Quill's turn. Alright, alright. Let's well, make another... Okay, so yeah, those are my two rolls, so 17... No, 22 with advantage. 22 with advantage? Yeah. Um... It's going to use its reaction, and as you go down to hit, um, you see a little wave of energy, and... The armor, like, kind of, like, deflects. Oh, wow. That's oh. a reaction? Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay, okay. Oh. Fortunately, that, I think, is all I have at the moment. All right. Uh, uh, yep, that's all I got. I'm okay with next that. is um, Maestro's turn. If I was to give somebody a potion, would, would it would be an spend, action. Would they have to spend an action, or would I just be there? So you can spend an action to give a potion, like have them drink it, or you can use an action to pass it to someone, and they can use an action to drink it. But like, if they're willing and they're like, you can pour it into somebody's mouth as an action. Okay. But you have to be like right yeah, next to them to do that. I, I only have thirty. So. Yeah. You could use an action to kind of like toss it to them, and they can use an action to catch it. That's a lot of movement. <laughs> I didn't realize you could like. It's kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna cast vicious mockery again. Save. Okay. You're 125 feet of movement to go in a square. It's horrendous. Your unfortunately, polished. Unfortunately, oh, wow. I got a 16. <laughs> oh, bitch. I'm sorry. Um, do you wish to do anything else on your turn, or? Um, nobody took their party. Right? Mm-hmm. Next is Chico's turn. There's nothing else I can. I'm gonna primal savagery this motherfucker again. Do it. That is it. Oh well, two. We'll uh. You don't want to... Oh, yeah. Oh, it's the same. That's a 17. A 17 damage? Okay. 17 to hit. Oh. Then... Oh, yeah. Oh, no. A 17 to hit, it misses. I'm sorry. Can I use Bardic Inspiration there, then? You can. What is it, Tone? Is it a... D6? D6. So that would be a 23 instead. Yeah, you hit then. 
ability check, attack roll, or save. Oh, yeah. Added after seeing, but before knowing the outcome. Then no, then. That doesn't count. Oh. Yeah, because I told you the outcome. I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, in the future, you know a 17 doesn't hit. Oh, right, I will okay. stay here then. Wow. Okay, so right. you still have your bardic. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I haven't used it yet, though. Alright, the knight is going to disengage. How dare you. I'm sorry for rule lord lawyering us, like, into the ground. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> They're gonna go right there. Oh, it shows me more bones. Oh, Who's roll? Oh, indeed, you showed me an initiative check from 36 minutes ago. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> it just popped up. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. D and D right. Beyond's being weird. It is going to end its turn. Okay. I'm cool. mad it didn't get That would be my turn, right? My, my mm -hmm. fucking vicious mockery. One, two, five, six. And it still has fairy fire attached to it? Yeah. Cause it does. I'm a fucking... I'm swinging again. All right, Quill. As you enter its field of range, it is able to do an attack on you. All right. Sorry, I'm reading it. Very good. Okay. All right. Does it still have disadvantage or no? Did it fail its last vicious mockery? Because you did it again, right? Oh, it succeeded the other vicious mockery. Oh, okay. Then no, then no, because it already—it's only the next okay. attack of vicious mockery. All right, so. cool. Unfortunately, that hits cool. I'm gonna defensive duelist reaction. Nice. Do it. It still hits. And it buffs it by two? Yeah, so it'd be 17 AC for that attack. Misses. Hell yeah. Oh. All right. Uh, so let's see. now it's your turn. So 17 plus six, 23 to hit. Hits. Yeah, so let's see. Four plus four. And then roll 2d6. So 15 total. So like I run up and like when he takes a swing, I like use one of my daggers to like slide across the blade and then like use the other one to like pierce into him. <laughs> All right. So as you do that, your blade goes up through the bottom of the helmet. And oh. you see <laughs> the helmet like crack all over. And you hear like a disembodied voice kind of echo around you, and it goes, Very good. You have passed my challenge. Oh, shit. Already? Yep. Nice. The knight nice then uh, stands up and just like casually removes the blade and hands it back to you. I, I take it and I like bow. Um, I hope we didn't disappoint. You did not. And the knight now bows back. That's one of the best battles I've had in a long time. I thank you. Thank you for allowing thank us to test our own skills. The combat, I guess. Killing us. And not killing us. You all fought with honor, and therefore you passed my challenge. Me. So if I, like, if Meanwhile, I, like, my show is mocking the fuck out of me. Yeah, fucking bitch. Fuck <laughs> fucking bitch. Right, fucking bitch. That was tight. Mom last night. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> All fucked with honor. What? What? Huh? <laughs> Who? What? Hmm? The All right, night. well. <laughs> yeah. The knight is going to go into the center, and you see the stage reset itself. So 
so sorry for your drawings. Uh, the stage resets itself, all the cracks in the armor, like, repair itself. And then you see him plunge his sword deep into the ground, and a door opens up behind him. Okay. Dokely. Yeah. That would be right there. And uh, his chest is going to open up, and he pulls out a small key, and will hand it to Quill. You've earned this. Please take it with you along your journey. Uh, I take the key. Odd. Um, does he say what it's for? It will help you along your journey. <laughs> um, what is your what is your name, uh, Sir Knight? I am the Knight of Honor. Uh, very nice to meet you, and very nice to meet you in combat as well. It was nice to meet you as well. Thank you for, um, how? Thank you for missing a couple times. There's, yeah, this door will take us to where we need to go. It will take you to the next challenge. To the next challenge! Great, okay, cool. Alright, to the next challenge. Um, should we... <sighs> okay, we're good, right? We're okay, we can go in? Yeah. We're good, yeah. Alright. Alright, we go. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Ooh, yeah. You guys ready? Oh, yeah. Oh, no. I'm, I, fuck. Reset the fuck. Accidentally drew him. Reset the fuck. Oh, oh, no. Technical difficulties. Glad it's not me this time. So what lies before us? A big room? A big square room? Is that what we're seeing here? I'm going to wait for Quill to get back. Oh, did he, did he drop? Yeah. Oh. Computer force restarted. Oh. So, just a second. Uh, erase my little line drawing. Race it. Can't you reset the map? Race it. I can. Or I can just add to it. I need to restart right now. Okay. Um, I can go up to four, but I have Would to go the up four o'clock. Take more than thirty minutes. Should we call it here, or could it be something that, without feeling rushed, be done in thirty? Um, we could call it here then. Yeah, that way it doesn't feel like you're rushing or like we're left like in the middle like of something, potentially. Okay. Well, this ended up being a three-part episode. Um, That's fine. <laughs> at least we're going to go straight into the challenges when we get back. But yeah, thank you guys for playing. This was fun. I'm excited to see what you guys do with the challenges. Eventually, we'll leave the library. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is the whole campaign now. Eventually, yep, Tone will get all the answers to all of his questions. Yeah. <laughs> He's going to come out with a notebook from the restricted area. So about the number four, section three. Yeah. <laughs> so I remember in episode one, you said 
at exactly you 18 minutes and three seconds. <laughs> I want to know what this is. <laughs> um, I'd still ugly, ugly, know ugly, What's up with that? Yeah. The fuck. The fuck. Well, now that we have a whole two weeks, I can come up with an elaborate backstory that I can just pull out a, a giant novel and just read to you guys. Nice. Really make this yeah. a 16-part episode. <laughs> Four episodes of just ugly, pugly, mugsly lore. Ugly, <laughs> <laughs> pugly. Yep. Uh, that was fun. Yeah, hell yeah. Thank you all. Uh, appreciate it. Thank you guys for playing. Yeah, well, and the stream, yeah. Thank you. Thank you.